And now just to have a conversation uh, regarding that particular doctor's strike, we are now on day three. And as we have just mentioned, clinical officers have now joined the strike starting midnight this morning. Joining me to have that conversation is Dr. Mercy Correo. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Mike. Now, um, clinical officers have joined the strike. And I remember earlier on, I had asked whether this was um, arranged or whether it was something that, you know, choreographed in that if an agreement was not reached, then clinical officers would join. In. But first of all, maybe let's first of all understand what do clinical officers do? Um, clinical officers in Kenya are what in the West they call uh, physician assistants. Mm -hmm. But here in Kenya you'll find that uh, because of the shortage of doctors that we have around, you'll find clinical officers manning our dispensaries, our health centers, and also parts, parts of our hospitals. And also we do have uh, specialist clinical officers, some are uh, anesthetists for example. So they have their role in the health sector, particularly because of the shortage of uh, doctors that we have across the country. Okay, so now now, what does that mean in terms of the health sector? Because from the footage we've been seeing, not having nurses, not having doctors, that I think is kind of obvious. But now with clinical officers, what have we withdrawn from the health sector that we are likely to suffer from? Uh, basically, what we've withdrawn from the health sector is all clinicians. Okay. That means we, don't, we cannot offer any form of medical service because now all you have is the janitors and any other support staff. But in terms of the clinical uh, expertise, we don't have the clinical officers, we don't have the nurses, we don't have the doctors who could at least uh, offer some form of medical service or medical care mm -hmm. in case a patient comes. So that is now what we are looking at, that the hospitals cannot offer any medical services. So literally, uh, to call a spade a spade, we do not have, fun uh, we do not, we do not have hospitals right now. Because you cannot get medicine, you cannot be treated. Literally what we have is just a building with equipment. Yes, okay. that is now with the, with, the, current with the current situation, that's what's happening. I remember that the doctors, not just the medical doctors, we also have the pharmacists and the dentist who are all in the doctor's union who've also got on strike. So we, we, we can say now with the clinical officers are starting their, this will be their first day of the strike, now we don't have any clinical services or rather whatever will be there will be skeleton staff mm -hmm. and because uh, we've seen now uh, what what um, different facilities have done is uh, have uh, staff that will take care of emergency services we have like for example Nakuri they were reporting that their ICU is still functioning that means they can handle uh, critical care but now with withdrawal of services of the clinical officers we'll need now to find out what what contingency measure now will they take. I remember yesterday they said um, the level five facilities could, uh, could be assisted by the fourth year uh, Kenya Medical Training College uh, clinicians or the clinical officers. Now we don't know if this now will change with the clinical officers calling uh, their strike today. Okay, Mike. and of course this is uh, mainly public hospitals, so the only um, clinical help you can get now is with private hospitals, which majority of Kenyans, of course, cannot uh, afford. It's not only afford, but some cannot access uh, private facilities because you'll find they are in far flung in areas right. mm -hmm. and most of the private facilities are in urban areas. Mm -hmm. So now what, what remains to be seen is what happens to that Kenyan who is in need of emergency care and the facility next to them cannot offer any form of service. Okay, so let's go now to the talks and the reason as to why doctors are striking. And uh, this is, of course, uh, following up with this uh, co collective bargain agreement of 2013, which was signed in July 2013. And there has been talks, or so we have thought uh, from the CS. Is that the case? Are we making any progress? Um, with the doctors, as of yesterday, because uh, this morning we've not had any update from either the doctors or, or the ministry, whether there'll be any meetings for talks. But yesterday, they, it's like the talks had hit a snag. And we are hoping that today either the doctors will, will get to the dialogue table or the ministry will do that. But uh, we have confirmation from the clinical officers that they have a meeting with the ministry at 9 a.m., to try and resolve the stalemate because the different cadres are asking for different, uh, have different issues that they are raising. Mm -hmm. The nurses are having their meeting at 11 a.m. again 
with the same ministry officials. Mm -hmm. So we, from the talks, those look like they will be positive. From the doctor's side, we are yet to hear anything. So as of now, obviously, it's something that we're still keeping tabs on. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still trying to get an, as much information as we can to see if this stalemate will be resolved. Because remember, Mike, uh, much as the individual patient will suffer because they cannot offer, uh, access services, when a life is lost, it could be a breadwinner and you could affect a number of families that are depending on these people. So it's not just the patient that is suffering, but the host of family members and the relatives that could be reliant on this, on this particular person if they pass on. So the suffering is, is it, it will have a ripple it's, effect it's and it will be compounded. It's the whole nation of the family that yes, is suffering yes. and the community as it yes. were. But now, uh, is there a possibility that we may have nurses going back and uh, the clinicians going back, maybe since now the negotiations are different and they're asking for different things and possibly now just have the doctors um, uh, resolve their, their, their issues? I think we cannot uh, conclusively say anything or speculate as right of now. now because remember on Monday when we when we had the press conference with the CS and they were very positive that by Tuesday they will get somewhere. But by the end of yesterday, there seemed to be a deadlock. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to speculate and try and foresee if one cadre will be back as the other ones wait because with the different demands and the different changing atmospheres every day, you never know what will happen. But obviously, we are hoping for a quick solution to the stalemate. All right. Thank you, Dr. Masi Korea.